I brought a couple of volunteers. It's, not, it's nothing like traveling with a, uh, a six-year-old and a four-year-old, you know, because it's a little bit easier to get out in the morning. I'm being very facetious, of course. Um, but they're here to help, and they're excited. Actually, Barbara, we saw you a couple of weeks ago with a governor. Uh, you got your trailer, thanks to everything that the state is doing, the governor to expedite, so you have a place to stay on your property. And the kids awarded her with a big basket full of goods. Now, it was one to help keep things clean and what have you, but the basket was bigger than they are. So they were trying to bring it over to her, which was very sweet. So you're in our prayers. And, and honestly, that's why we're back here today. I know you've seen the governor quite a bit coming here and uh, doing everything that he can to support the people here in Southwest Florida. Um, and just as we talk about, you know, the national media and whatnot, they came and they covered and they left. We've always said from the very beginning that we will not forget you. You're going to be with us every step of the way until you are back on your feet and you are made whole. Um. <laughs> tell you it's really great to just see the resiliency of the people of Southwest Florida and I see such progress when I, I come back and I'm able to drive around and just see how bit by bit people are getting back back on their feet um, so that's why we're excited to be here today we have a couple of really cool announcements uh, one of which is uh, really talking about how the Florida Disaster Fund has come in in a big way to help folks and really in twofold right this is where the private sector meets government and it never should be a government go at it along solution a go at it alone solution it really should be how can we work with the goodwill of the people across the state and the country and also the companies to be able to maximize those resources and supplement what government is doing and if government is met up in bureaucracy especially on the federal side then we can swoop in with the Florida Disaster Fund and help expedite people so that way they get what they need quicker um, we've raised I think about 64 million dollars in counting to the fund since it was launched and another thing, too, you just take a look around. This is another big part of the Florida Disaster Fund, and that is all of the physical goods. So you have people from across the country who are, who are saying, I've got X, I've got Y, where can I send it? What can I do with it? And that's one of our big announcements today is this warehouse and all of the goods that you see here today coming in fresh from Tampa. So things like uh, bed sheets and bedding, thousands of pillows. Um, Masonite, by the way, a great partner of ours, they donated 1,216 doors. And they brought them here. So and what is neat about where we are is when you get this, and this is something that Kevin Guthrie has worked very hard on with the Department of Emergency Management and also um, Secretary Josie Tamayo is going to come up from Volunteer Florida and talk about when you have all of this goodwill and you have people who want to send things, by the way, we had a lady who was knitting mittens and she wanted to send mittens. And so we were helping to facilitate that, although we said people probably in the Northeast and the Midwest probably need those mittens a little bit more than the people in Southwest Florida. But how do you harness that goodwill? How do you organize it? And how do you deploy it quickly to the people in Southwest Florida? And that's where one of the uh, announcements comes in. In addition to getting all of these goods coming in from across the country, maybe tonight with the 1,200 doors that are here, uh, Walmart, um, Home Depot, Lowe's donating all of these goods. Honestly, if I went through every company that donated, we would be here for a long time. But having all of these physical goods here, you have to have a place that can house all of these goods and, again, distribute them. Uh, and that is really what's neat about um, Adventist Community Services. So we initially gave them a grant from the Florida Disaster Fund for $74,000. They're doing great things. Again, they're like the Amazon here of Southwest Florida, but they needed more money. They applied to FEMA, and they were denied from FEMA. But we said, that's okay. That's all right, because that's where the Florida Disaster Fund comes in, and we're able to give them even more money today. So we're excited to give them a check for $427,000. So that will help them be able to facilitate the logistics of this operation, which is a big deal. Uh, if there's somebody out there who's still in need, one of the things that the great folks up in Tallahassee who are supporting the governor have been able to create is a portal. And this is a portal for people across Southwest Florida, really across the state, who have unmet needs as it pertains to Hurricane Ian. And if you need something, clothing, bedding, food, those immediate supplies, you can go to ianrecovery.fl.gov and it'll help find what you need 
uh, very quickly so we can help support you. Um, which really leads me to my third announcement. Um, I've found in my work in the child welfare sphere that you could have the greatest resources in the world, but if you don't know that they exist, what good are they? That also is where enrecovery.fl.gov come in, but it also comes in with navigators, people who are on the ground for the long haul to be able to help people navigate the system, whether it be FEMA, whether it be state dollars, whether it be the Florida Disaster Fund. How do you put the pieces together for the long haul? And so we're excited today to do uh, another $100,000 to help with the long-term recovery groups, to help people just find the path back to prosperity because it's not always an easy thing. There's a lot of phone calls. And if you're trying to go to DuckDuckGo or Google to put all of the pieces together, sometimes it can be a little convoluted and you don't have times. A lot of time if you're a mom and you're trying to work and you only have so much time in the evening and so much bandwidth. So that's where these navigators are really coming in. So we're supporting their efforts with another $100,000. Uh, another neat thing that we're doing, we have found um, that there are still people who need help, of course, with re remediation work on their homes. There's still mold that needs to be taken care of. Electric is a big deal, obviously. There's a supply chain crisis. There's a supply and demand crisis. There's a lot of need down here. Um, and there's you know only an X amount of supply of people who can service those goods. Uh, but when talking with Kevin Guthrie last night from the Department of Emergency Management, um, we, when we originally donated money from the Florida Disaster Fund to nonprofits, which I think is now up to $45 million, which has gone out the door in total of the 64 that we've, we've been able to raise, we've donated a lot. We set a cap at about $10,000 per household as it pertained to the remediation efforts. And Kevin last night called me and he was talking about the story of an 80-year-old woman who was in her home. And the one thing that she needed to get back into her house was to get her electric fixed. And it was totaling upwards of $18,000. And I told Kevin, I said, if we increase this money from $10,000 to, say, $25,000, is that going to get her back into her home faster? He said, without a doubt, it absolutely will. Now, you still have limitations, obviously, with getting the contractors out there and doing things. But $18,000 is a lot of money for electric and so what we've decided today to do another million dollars from the Florida Disaster Fund, specifically to raise that cap to $25,000 so people like that 80-year-old woman who is sitting uh, with her family right now, once she gets her electric fixed, then she can get back into her home. And this is specifically what the Florida Disaster Fund is all about, filling the needs where we see we need them the most. And so I'm excited to do that with a million dollars uh, to be able to get people, again, back on their feet as fast as humanly possible. Uh, the governor has been down here, as you well know, quite a lot. Sometimes, you know, I don't see him very often, so if the, the kids and I are missing him, we just turn on the Florida channel and we see Dad <laughs> down in southwest Florida. Look, there's Dad. He's back down here again because he's obviously very committed uh, to getting people uh, made whole again. <clears throat> One of the things that he announced from the Florida Disaster Fund, and keep in mind, too, We've done the 64 million with the Florida. We have more money that we can do with that as we identify needs. I mean, he's come in with $25 million in state money to help pay for building goods and uh, uh, building supplies to be able to help with this. So it's been really a great collaboration. But from the Florida Disaster Fund, the governor did $3 million to go to support our teachers. Because I heard so many wonderful stories from teachers who in the midst of everything that was happening and the chaos, and they had a lot of problems in their homes, they were some of the first people to rally to get the schools open as quickly as possible and to do it for the well-being of the students because they knew when the families were having a hard time putting the pieces together to have school, a place for them to go to, to be able to be with their friends, to learn, to be happy was so important. So that's why the governor donated the $3 million from the Florida Disaster Fund. And I want to invite somebody up here from Sanibel School, um, Julie Wappas, who was one of the beneficiaries of the Florida Disaster Fund, to give you a little context and perspective on what that money did for her and how it helped her and her school. Good morning, everyone, and Honorable First Lady Casey. I've been asked to briefly share my life-changing journey over these last four months. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Julie Wappas. I've had the privilege of teaching at the Sanibel School for over 40 years, and also I'm blessed to call Sanibel Island my home. My husband, myself, and our three dogs were the last vehicle to leave Sanibel on September 28th. The causeway was already washing away, 
and the winds were so strong, we knew we couldn't make it over the big span without consequences unknown. We turned around, headed home, and weathered the most grueling long hours of our lives. As the water rose to 13 feet under us, I truly knew in my heart Sanibel was being washed back into the sea. Little did I know what lay in the days ahead would be just as tough as the storm. We lost most everything, cars, possessions, and what wasn't taken was left covered in several inches of thick concrete like mud. We listened for days to fire alarms, helicopters, and almost worse, the deafening sound of overwhelming silence. Our only communication was to ride our bikes to the top of the first bridge and try to get a call out if we were lucky. I remember like it was yesterday, standing there alone, looking at the devastated causeway, thinking, when I leave here, I won't be back, at the very least for a year, maybe two. And that's where the hero enters my story. Sanibel, Southwest Florida, and the world watched in utter disbelief and amazement at what a champion can do. In two weeks, Governor DeSantis orchestrated a restoration project unlike any other in modern history. Thank you, sir, please thank your husband, for your incredible vision, integrity, and heart for your constituents, consist, constituents and me. I was also devastated on another front as well. My classroom took the brunt of the surge for the elementary wing of my school. I lost everything. My most important treasure of 40 years of class pictures with my students. My life's work of building kids of integrity. Enter the beautiful heroine of my story. Her name is First Lady Casey DeSantis. Her passion for education and vision to support those in the front line who needed financial help included me. I am humbled and so grateful to her gift to me through the foundation of Lee County Schools. For the first time in my life, I accepted a gift which I used to buy tools lost in the storm to rebuild my home. I truly thank you, First Lady DeSantis, for your loving heart and leadership of our great state of Florida. God bless you and thank you so much. Um, and not only were our great teachers on the front lines in the wake of the storm, we also had our first responders who a lot of times were answering the call, right? They were getting the call just as they were thinking about their homes and their families, but they went out to serve because that they knew that that's God's purpose for them to make sure that they're taking care of other people. So I know of stories of people who were on their phones literally as they were fulfilling calls with, with folks who were in need. And um, so that's another reason why the governor came in and did $2 million to support the first responders to help them get back on their feet. Uh, and Christopher Moore is here to talk a little bit about his story. He's the fire battalion chief at Cape Coral Fire Department. Uh, it's an honor to be asked to be here. Thank you very much. I, like so many other fellow public servants and emergency workers, suffered severe loss. The home that I lived in and raised my children in for over 30 years is in ruins. The effects of Hurricane Ian caused flooding and wind damage, <clears throat> excuse me, like so many others uh, in my community. I salvaged a few outfits and several pieces of furniture that my grandfather had made for me, but all in all lost everything else. There's a strong possibility that I will not be back, <clears throat> excuse me, in my home and be displaced for several years. The support and financial assistance given by the First Lady and the disaster funding is impressive and also uh, helping so many in my community. My emotions stir when I'm asked what the outreach and compassion others have uh, offered to me means to me personally. In one of my worst times in my life, the help and assistance from so many people that do not even know me is overwhelming and shocking. The, dis excuse me, the DeSantis Florida Disaster Funding has allowed me to maintain a sense of normalcy. It has helped me replace basic items that I lost, clothing, shoes, and essentials. But most importantly, it's allowed me to keep working, serving my community without the stress, the fear, and the huge emotional burden that I would have without the assistance and help. I see true compassion and outreach of others to help me and my need, and it's astounding. I have more appreciation for my representatives, both at the state level and at the local level. I'm truly grateful. Thank you. And we thank um, you and obviously everyone who are on the front lines for their service and your continued service um, for the state of Florida and your community. 
Uh, you know, we've spent, like I said, upwards of 44 million on nonprofits um, to help, and they really are the heart and soul. When I've been down here, I mean, we still have people up in Northwest Florida from Hurricane Michael still on the ground servicing folks in need. So when you see these groups here in Southwest Florida, know that they're in it for the long haul uh, because that they feel is their purpose, and they are. I mean, I look at some of these groups and I wonder if you weren't down here doing this work, who would be doing it? And um, so we're very appreciative of it. Uh, one of those entities is Better Together. They really focus on the child welfare sphere their boots on the ground in the literal sense. They were out there knocking on doors, making sure that children had what they need and families had what they needed, and they were also making phone calls. And if there were needs that weren't being met, they were sourcing it and bringing it right to their doorstep. And so one of those beneficiaries is Jen Downs, um, and she re received help from Better Together, and she has her story. Good morning. I am going to get through this without tears. Um, I am first and foremost a mother. I have a seven and eight year old, um, beautiful boys, wild and crazy, very appreciative of everything they've had in life. I have a husband, uh, we'll have 10 years next week, um, and we've been through it like everybody else. So when Hurricane Ian hit, our home flooded, like many others, we lost nearly everything um, between you know, the wind and the, the flooding, um, we lost furniture, we lost most of my boys' possessions. So Christmas time rolled around and we weren't sure how we were gonna make Christmas happen for them. Um, and in came Ms. DeSantis and Better Together. Um, through the funding of the Florida Disaster Fund, Better Together was able to, to bless us with money to make Christmas happen for our children and purchase a grill um, because we really missed grilling chicken um, for dinner. So. Through all the destruction that our community had, my whole neighborhood flooded, um, we've had a direct benefit from this funding. And again, my children who had to take everything from their home and put it to the curb, now got a Christmas. All they asked for was silly things, like a baseball, a Pokemon card set, little things they were very um, reserved because they knew you know, they couldn't ask for big items this year. Um, so through the funding and through Better Together, we were able to give them a Christmas like no other. And that wouldn't have happened without these funds. Um, we've seen our community come together like never before. Everybody is a neighbor again, everybody is a friend again, and everybody is helping each other again. And that's something I feel like we had lost for a while and now we have it back. So I'm extremely appreciative for everything that has been done for our family and everyone around us. Um, we have been a foster family with Better Together for upwards of five years. We've taken in a few children into our homes and helped their family get back on their feet, which again wouldn't have been uh, existent without Better Together. So we've seen families transform and now we feel like it has come full circle and our family has been transformed as well since the hurricane. Um, so we're very appreciative for Megan Rose and everything they have done for us and for Ms. DeSantis and all the funding, which we know wouldn't have been possible without our great governor. So thank you. Oh, and you know, the, the governor and myself and the team up in Tallahassee, I mean, facilitators, we're just facilitators of the goodwill of people across the state. I mean, there are a lot of mamas, a lot of mamas that were donating to the Florida Disaster Fund. And even if it was five, ten dollars, whatever they can afford, but when you add it up at scale, and why it was so smart from the very beginning from the governor to organize it, because sometimes when you look at some of these entities, and there's a lot of grifters out there too, which really irks me, you know, they take the money that would go to somebody like her and her family, and then they take it and they use it for other means that wouldn't even touch her and that, and that to me is just obnoxious so when we from the very beginning actually before the storm made landfall we set up the Florida Disaster Fund and got the message out quickly that this was the one-stop shop because we knew that as the storm came on board there would be needs beyond what government could provide and so we knew that there would be a lot of goodwill from awesome people across the state and, and the country and so how do we harness that efficiently and effectively to then work with government so where they're not meeting needs especially on the federal side we can come in and, su and supplement them so um, that's why you know there's a lot of things to go around but I mean the goodwill of people is really number one because we wouldn't have a Florida disaster fund if it weren't for them uh, Siobhan Harris secretary Siobhan Harris who is amazing I was talking to her about better together uh, she was literally boots on the ground I mean she's running an agency 
but she's out there literally knocking doors with Better Together to better understand how they're supporting the child welfare sphere. And it was really, I mean, she was really talking about how empowering it was. And it goes back again to our philosophical way that we approach government. It is, yes, we have a role, and yes, there are things that we can do, but how do we harness the horsepower of people who are already doing good on the ground? So I'll have Secretary Harris come up and say a few words. Thank you, First Lady. I want to start by thanking the Governor and the First Lady for their unwavering commitment in supporting individuals and families impacted by the storm. The sense of urgency that they commanded is unparalleled. The First Lady's passion and compassion for helping individuals in need shines through in everything that she does. And we're so grateful for her tireless efforts in raising monies through the Florida Disaster Fund. We know that some of those dollars helped organizations that work directly with the families we serve. DCF has been boots on the ground almost immediately following the storm, as the First Lady said, leveraging all, any and all of the resources that we have at our disposal to support the recovery efforts. But we wouldn't be able to do what we do without our partners. Families like the Downs serving as foster parents make such a difference. And in their time of need, we could lean on organizations like Better Together, who were ready to stand in the gap, not only to help foster families, but to also support families struggling so they wouldn't enter our child welfare system. I wanna thank you again, First Lady, for your leadership and to all of the organizations and volunteers who continue to support this area. Thank you. Um, and Secretary Tamayo, I mean, she has been receiving a lot of incoming. I remember when we were first raising money for uh, for the Florida Disaster Fund, and we were going out and doing events, and uh, she would, her phone would be lighting up, and I would say, who is it? And she's like, well, I think it's somebody who wants to send us money. And I said, well, get out of the meeting and go answer the phone call. Like, let's make sure we're not missing any opportunities. And so uh, that happened quite a bit where we would get into something, and then she would hightail it out of there, but it was all, I mean, worth it at the end of the day. Um, but she's also done a great job with, you know, helping to facilitate this and work with the entities uh, like Adventist to be able, as people are saying, can I send things like mittens or can I send 1,200 doors or what should I do with these pillows? How do we organize it and deploy it? Because that in and of itself is a huge operation. She's been working tirelessly with that as the head of Volunteer Florida. So I'll have her come up and say a few words. You know, it's um, one of the greatest privileges of my life to be able not only to stand here and to have this wonderful position that the governor and the first lady has given me, but also to pay it forward to the many Floridians that give up their lives, our first responders, our teachers, everyone that's been involved in this effort. So first and foremost, I wanna thank you all for having me. I am the CEO of Volunteer Florida. I call it a title. I, I am a facilitator, a public servant, and here to help the people of the state of Florida and serve, obviously, our wonderful, wonderful first lady and governor. And I am so grateful obviously as, uh, as we lead Volunteer Florida to bring attention to the ongoing need for aid in our state. This is an unprecedented storm, as you all will know. And since September 28th, we have raised over $64 million, which is unprecedented by any stretch, which I would remiss if not say, First Lady, we, we're all still taking donations yeah, yeah. at www.disasterfund.org. And uh, please go to Volunteer Florida as well. So. Since Hurricane Ian hit, we've had amazing volunteer organizations that have selflessly, like the Adventists, uh, joined in response. Many, too many to mention. I, I can tell you, I could be here for 10 minutes just saying that. And most, and, and, and more importantly, our partners, such as Secretary Harris, Kevin Guthrie, all our wonderful uh, state leaders have been involved, but we would not be able to do this without the passion, the purpose, and the perseverance, and the leadership of the governor and the first lady. So big round of applause for them. Um, and, and I see it every day, and I smile, and it makes me proud to be a Floridian and proud to be a member of this, the free state of Florida. So I have to say that. So uh, I think with this award today, we have, we have $64 million to date, and we have people, we have had over 64,000 people send in checks and donations, and corporate sponsors, healthcare companies, everything, you name it. So I think with the information today, we will have given out of the 64, almost $47 million, almost $47 million which is amazing. I wanna congratulate the Adventists 
and Mr. Ryan Amos, uh, who they've been great partners and they're great partners to us whenever we're in these situations, the Adventist Services, and also to the long-term recovery groups uh, throughout Florida that are throughout Florida that are helping every day, sort of the boots on the ground, assisting uh, communities with those unmet needs, and uh, we're happy that they are going to be receiving services today. And as I say, Volunteer Florida, my staff, our board, our commission, uh, remain committed to helping every and ongoing recovery events because we know that recovery takes time. But as the First Lady and the Governor said, we're here, we have your back. And every day we get up in the morning, and I will tell you, I had a call the other day and a gentleman said, our employees got together and they put together a special drink and we have raised $15,000 and so I am on my way to Orlando to meet with him to pick up the check first lady for $15,000. So uh, every day people just, and, and, and they call and they want to know what's going on and how are people doing and I, I just want to tell you, it is, I am very proud to be part of Volunteer Florida. I'm very proud of our state. I'm especially proud and thankful that we have the leadership that we have. And please continue to support us and continue to support your communities because with us together, we grow more resilient and more powerful and it is a great state to be a part of. And thank you for listening to me this morning. And thank you. No, 100%. Like, we still want to raise a lot of money. There are still needs that need to be met. And so, uh, yeah, she gave you floridadisasterfund.org, a great place to go to. Um, we, we have a lot of work to do, and we are not going to stop anytime soon. So every donation and everything that you can do, whether it's a physical good or $5, makes a world of difference to somebody. So we appreciate that. And also, I think it's important to come out here to talk about the Florida Disaster Fund because so often you have – a lot of nonprofits, some are great, some are wonderful, and then you have some others that take some money, but you never hear from them again. You never see a return on your investment. And so we want to get out and show the people of the state and the country exactly how this money is being spent and how it's supporting people, because I think that that is our responsibility to show people that we are spending it well, we are working with state and federal government to maximize those resources and hold people accountable and making sure that when we give money, like $427,000 to Adventus, that they are doing the right things to get goods and needs and help to people of Southwest Florida. And last but not least, when we talk about FEMA and we talk about the federal government, we need a good fighter up there. And I'll tell you from the beginning, uh, Congressman Donalds has been one of those fighters. I remember right after the hurricane hit, the governor and I were down here, we were walking around and we, we talked with Congressman Donalds uh, around the round table, just talking about what we saw in the immediate aftermath. But I've been on the phone with him and his wife, Erica, talking about what else do you see? You know your community so well. What can we do to maximize these resources? Where could resources go that might traditionally not have gone, but how can we help people in need? And so Congressman Donalds and his wife Erica have been two tireless advocates, and I want to give him an opportunity to come up and talk about how he's fighting the good fight up in Washington. Uh, first and foremost, uh, to the governor and to the first lady, their leadership in the aftermath, actually leading up to the hurricane and in the aftermath since, has been tremendous. Um, it's been very, very difficult on our community, but if it was not for their leadership pre and post storm, uh, we would not be where we are. And so, you know, on behalf of the 19th Congressional District, I really want to say thank you to both of you for all that you've done for our area and our, and our community. Um, listen, recovery is difficult just is. But the thing that's always been uh, the, the, the number one thing I've seen, <clears throat> my staff has seen, has been the heart and the desire to get back on, on your feet. Everybody here in Southwest Florida, once this storm left, had one goal in mind, one mission in mind. It's let's rebuild and let's do it fast. And that's not mess with red tape. So when the Matt Lachey Bridge, when the early estimates were six months and it happened in three days, that was because of leadership and perseverance. Um, it was. It was. When the Sanibel Causeway, the estimates were two years, and it was 28 days, that's leadership and perseverance. Um, my, dip, my district director, Jesse Pert, and I, we actually stumbled into this warehouse off of a lot of uh, rumors and conversations about what was happening here in this location. We came in here maybe two weeks post-storm. 
And we just walked in off the loading dock and started walking around. And a couple of guys that were in here getting stuff prepared to go out, they were like, uh, who are you? And, uh, and I said, well, I'm your congressman, and I've heard about this location. And we were getting so many people from around the country who wanted to send resources. But at the time, the problem was, where do you send them? How is it organized, and how is it going to go out? And so to your organization, Aventus, and all the work you have done here has been so helpful. And I've noticed the mattresses over in the back in the air mattresses, which, by the way, are better. You know, those, those foam mattresses, those things are awesome, by the way. I have one myself. It's the best thing ever. That stuff is really phenomenal to get out to the people of Southwest Florida. So I really want to thank you for your mission, all the work you guys have done out of the center to distribute goods uh, going out. Now, to FEMA. Um, they were pretty good at the beginning. They've tapered off some. Uh, there's something going on in Washington called Homeland Reauthorization, of which FEMA is a part. And so um, we will be having many more discussions about how to work with FEMA to improve FEMA, to not only help Southwest Florida continue to rebuild, but then for the future disaster that unfortunately may occur in our country, that FEMA is prepared to do the things that the state of Florida has done under the leadership of Governor DeSantis and First Lady DeSantis so that nobody anywhere in the country is left behind. So First Lady, you've been a tremendous advocate for our area. Thank you for all that you've done. And yes, FloridaDisasterFund.org. That's right, dot org? That's right, dot org. FloridaDisasterFund.org. These funds have been crucial to the rebuilding effort and to helping all of the people of Southwest Florida. Thank you, guys. Thank you. No, I think some of those federal bureaucracies can take a page from the DeSantis playbook and learn how to get things done quickly, efficiently, effectively, cut the red tape. Yeah. And let's just work on behalf of people in need. So with that, I just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for the tireless support of all of you who have been boots on the ground and helping good folks in need. Um, thank you to uh, all of the folks that we've supported here today, to our teachers, to, of course, our great first responders. Um, as the governor likes to say, you know, you haven't seen anything yet. We've just only begun to fight. So God bless you, and thanks for being here. Oh, and we'll do the check. So with Adventist, so $427,500. So Madison and Mason are with us, too. Oh, one of them's asleep. So I must be a very compelling speaker. One of our children is now asleep, although this happens a lot of times when we read at night. I get halfway through the story, and then she conks out. It's okay. Mason, but, I, you know, it's really important, I believe, that the kids get up, and they're a part of this, and they're learning the importance of volunteering, and they learn how to give back. And um, so that's why I brought them with me. I just didn't – they were very excited, so we woke up very early this morning, so – Okay, come on, Mace, get up here. Oh, my God. Here, you stand right in front. All right, there we go. Oh, that's wonderful. Yes.